Hi, this is Ramon Thomas from sunny South Africa. It's been about two weeks since my last video and I look forward to talking to you again. So today I want to talk about Mag Magda Bergeska. She is the CEO of Signia, um, a asset management company and sometimes referred to as a fintech company based in Cape Town. And over the last uh, two years she's been quite outspoken about uh, the Guptas and corruption, KPMG and uh, various companies and financial uh, shenanigans taking place in South Africa. Magda is the most colorful, outgoing, strong, independent woman that I know. When we first met, we were actually introduced. We were set up and uh, Neither of us really took a shine to the other person. And uh, I think that was actually also a great start because it meant we, we started with very low expectations of each other. The reason I'm doing this video is because several people, or several journalists, in fact, are referring to her as a billionaire. And I couldn't find any evidence for this. Um, I had a look at various lists that um, uh, purport to be definitive in terms of the richest people in South Africa or the richest South Africans and she doesn't appear on any of those lists. So who is Magda Rzyska? Uh, well she was born in Poland and um, after uh, a war she ended up being a refugee and uh, moved to South Africa at a young age with her parents. Um, she learned to speak English and she acquired actuarial science degree from UCT, the University of Cape Town. And um, she became, she joined Alexander Forbes and later Coronation. And with her friend, Zeke Marlow, um, she sold African Harvest and then started Signia. My name is Magda Wierzycka and I'm a chief executive of a company called Signia. And what we do is we manage money savings on behalf of South Africans. Um, and we manage savings in pension funds and we also offer unit trusts to individual investors. So you can invest with Signia in a variety of different ways. Magda has become quite uh, a well-known media personality in a sense because she's very widely quoted on radio and television in South Africa um, and specifically she's speaking out quite frequently uh, or commenting on corruption, fraud um, and uh, matters relating to uh, what we call uh, state capture in South Africa um, which involved the infamous uh, Gupta family and their links to our former president uh, Jacob Zuma so she uh, has become like the de facto go-to person for comment on that. And I'm just going to reference some of those um, uh, times that she's been noted. and outspoken. Right from school days when she couldn't speak English um, to university days where uh, she was only able to go to university on, on a bursary and, uh, you know, get by on uh, using her food budget to dress herself. Um, she's always known that she has to work harder than everyone else. So the listing on the JSC was quite a critical moment in the life cycle of Signia. Uh, we're embarking on a new chapter of this book. It's a book I'm going to write one day when I retire. But uh, this is really the opening chapter right there. Um, and let's look forward to nine o'clock and see what happens. And, uh, you know, the, the nice thing about the listing, because we were still going through a bit of a, you know, a strong economy and a lot of foreign investors in South Africa, um, we were 21 times oversubscribed. So there was huge hype around Signia listing on the JSE, probably too much hype. Uh, because, you know, you, you list, but if people overvalue your company, you then have to deliver to these really unreasonable expectations. And I can control everything about this business other than the share Okay, so maybe let me just get to the crux of my story, which is um, there's been all these articles referring to um, Ms. Verziska as a billionaire. Um, Signia's market capitalization is currently around 1.9 billion rand. 
and according to their 2017 annual report, she owns about 22 million shares. And at the recent closing price, I calculated um, her shareholding to be worth around 277 million rand. She's also not listed, as I mentioned before, in any of the uh, richest people in South Africa lists that has been published. So I'm really trying to confirm um, whether she really is a rand billionaire or not. You know, the currency of South Africa is currently around uh, 12 to the dollar. So for her to be a billionaire would mean that she has to have in the region of around 86 million US dollars. The South African rand is currently 11.54 to the dollar, which means that she has to have about 86 million dollars to have um, to be worth more than one billion. Um, rand. The richest woman in South Africa apparently is Pam Golding, and she's worth about 11 billion rand. Uh, Wendy Applebaum is worth around uh, 4.7 billion rand. Wendy Ackerman. The wife of uh, Raymond Ackerman is worth around 1.9 billion rand. Irene Sharnley is worth 1.5 billion rand. Bridget Khadebe is worth 1.5 1 billion rand. And then it all drops below a billion. Uh, there's, a lady, there's somebody called Sharon Wapnik worth 433 million rand. Elizabeth Bradley worth 332 million rand. Judy Glamini worth 124 million rand. Nonklantla Moji Nube worth 94 million rand. Mampela, the infamous, I would say, Mampela Rampele, worth 55 million rand. And then there's a few other people uh, that's uh, worth noting, like Ida Fenter, um, Wendy Luhabe, and Santi Buerta, that are quite prominent businesswomen. Well, Ida Fenter divorced Bill Fenter, uh, who was the founder of the Altron Altec Group. And um, she received the largest uh, divorce settlement in the history of South Africa. Anyway, I have been unable to find Magda Rajiska on any of these lists. And I really, really want to know how she suddenly became a billionaire if her shares in her own company is only worth uh, around 200 million rand. Um, you know, where does she get the other 800 million rand from? Now, even if she is a really good investor as she's running an asset management company, I think she does know a lot about investments and the financial markets, being an actuary and really good with numbers. Um, she may indeed have other investments, but in my experience, the, the CEOs of companies tend to put most of their um, stock or most of the investments into their own company because uh, that's where they derive most of the value from so I would say um, at his peak uh, or before leaving Microsoft certainly Bill Gates probably had most of his uh, net worth in Microsoft itself the same could be said for Mark Zuckerberg Steve Jobs and probably with Oprah it's the same you know I don't know if Oprah's company is public, publicly traded Harpo Productions in fact I don't think so so I'm not sure how her net worth is calculated. But um, everybody else that um, I know that has become a billionaire or extremely rich from running a particular business or company had their primary shareholding in their own business, not in other businesses. So there's a very big gap between the 200 million um, uh, of, let's say, net worth from her Signia holdings and um, yeah, just having a more detailed look at Signia, the company's market capitalization is currently around 1.86 billion. Um, okay, I know that she probably does have shareholding outside of this company, but seriously, if she owned half of this company's shares, that would even that wouldn't be enough to make her a billionaire because the company is worth uh, less than 2 billion rand. Um, there's 154 million shares outstanding and the current share price at Friday's close was uh, 11 rand 99. Um, so the company has listed um, 
in 2015 and uh, it reached a peak of around 22 rand um, and nine cents. So it's um, almost half um, of its peak that it reached um, in April 2016. So what I've done is I have effectively added to the rewards that have been for posted for information leading to the arrests um, of the Gupta brothers. Um, so in conclusion, I just want to say that I have contacted um, a number of the journalists who have written about this and referred to her as a very wealthy uh, woman or a, a wealthy South African or billionaire Magda Berziska because I want to find out what sources they are using. Um, certainly, if you look at any of the public records, um, well, she doesn't have a Wikipedia page. Uh, she's listed on Who's Who, uh, which is simply a, a resume and doesn't have any financial information. Um, and um, my calculations of her holdings insignia is based on the 2017 annual report and the number of shares that she holds in the company um, in her direct holdings in the company. So if anybody does know anything about uh, Magda Verzhiska um, and how, uh, what other investments she may have, um, I'd be happy to um, update uh, this video um, with additional information. But as far as I can tell, she may be worth two or three hundred million rand. Um, I doubt that she's worth uh, even five hundred million uh, rand and uh, whatever holding she has or whatever uh, asset she has I think I believe most of it is tied up into Signia and probably some related investments. Um, I don't believe she has any significant stakes in any other major South African companies listed on the JSE. I would like to disclose that I do um, hold one of the Signia ETF products in my tax-free savings account um, my broker that I use is Easy Equities, and if anybody's interested in investments, um, I'm going to put a link to Easy Equities for you to sign up and join. But um, yeah, in fact, if you have any comments about uh, Magda Brzezka, uh, please post them, any questions or any information that you might have, um, any sources that can help me get a better understanding of who she is, um, please share them. A final disclosure, um, I've never met her, I've never spoken to her. Um, and I really do admire her for all the work that she's done in terms of uh, speaking out about corruption in South Africa and on state capture. And um, I think she's a, a role model for the kind of business leaders that we need um, in this country. And, you know, she is definitely, I think, a great role model for as a businesswoman. OK, so well, that's it for today. Um, if you like this video, like this video, subscribe and share it. And also remember to sign up to my Patreon if, you like, um, if you'd like to support me in making more videos like this. I'd really like to do more videos about South Africa.